Finally, we have seen air. That means we finally get to get Sister Christian out of our heads. Don't get me wrong. Great song. Great trailer. It's just been stuck in there since the first time we saw the trailer. Yeah. And just... We'll be alright tonight. Finally. Welcome to the Cine Fanatics. My name's Robert Adams. I'm off key. Sorry, Chris Adams. <laughs> and I got a big old smile on my face, grinning ear from ear, boys. That's right. I'm quoting Ben Affleck from Boiler Room. But that's because we just saw Air. And let me tell you about this movie in a spoiler-free review. Wait. Spoil hold on. What's the point? This is a based on a true story. The spoilers are out there. Yeah, like, are we so not supposed to spoil that the Air Jordan sneaker was actually created and is one of the most massively popular shoes ever made? Spoiler, Michael Jordan signed with Nike. All right, well, okay, this is a spoiler review, I guess, then. <laughs> Regardless of what the title of this video may say. Uh, yeah, so we just got back from seeing this fantastic movie. Uh, right off the bat, um, this is going to be a very positive review. I don't know what how else to go with this. It, it really is. If you're wanting to hear something <laughs> negative... They don't show Michael Jordan's face. That's probably well, the most negative of this movie. They don't show his face when he's a young man. They show Michael Jordan's face. Like archive footage, yeah. But it's all actually Michael Jordan that they're showing. Yeah. Um... So, yeah, like, uh, I know that's the big one. Everyone wanted to see that in the trailer. And you really, you see that one shot of him, like, walking, walking the through hall. the hall in the trailer. That really is about it from the movie. He's in the movie a couple of times, but he's always, like... The back of your head look ridiculous. <laughs> so, yeah, you don't actually ever see his face, no. which... <sighs> it's a choice. It's a, it's a specific choice, and I think it's... I think, ultimately, it kind of took me out the... A little bit, kind of a little bit distracting that we don't see his face yeah. this time. But I think, you know, as you watch the movie, it's it's a longevity thing. It's It makes sense that they chose not to do that because it would be, it would actually be distracting to see Michael Jordan's face in this movie. Especially when they want to show Michael Jordan in various magazines and archive footage and all of that. And they want to use the actual Michael Jordan in that in that way. And the focus of the movie really is on Sonny Vaccaro, Matt yeah. Damon's character, and how passionate he is to get this shoe on Michael Jordan's feet. Basically. Uh, so, yeah, I, I agree. Like, if you were to do a deep fake or cast some lookalike actor, it would be very distracting. Mm -hmm. If they were to cast, like, some big-name actor, it would be very distracting. I actually kind of like the fact that they didn't yeah. show his face. Yeah, I think it's a, very, it's a very specific choice, and it makes a lot of sense when you think about it. <laughs> so I guess this negative is actually a, still a positive of this movie. See, there's it's going to be hard to find anything negative. Here's the say. negative. Sports. We don't know sports. You don't have to know sports. Though. You don't have to. You know Michael Jordan this, played for the Bulls, and that's about all you need to know. To me, this is like Moneyball mm -hmm. in that I don't know baseball. I don't understand baseball. They did a lot of like deep talk in Moneyball about how baseball works, ethics of the game, and and whatever. you don't really need to understand any of it to get the crux of that movie, which is a man fighting against the odds, essentially. Kind of similar here, and it's a lot of, it's, honestly, I think that's what the genre of sports movie usually does, is there's usually an underdog story involved. Mm -hmm. In this case, Nike, as a company, was uh, the underdog in real life and in this movie, obviously, was an underdog up against Converse and Adidas, and we we're watching that underdog fight in terms of Sonny trying to, trying to achieve the impossible, which is to create, essentially, a new star that they can have under their brand. Man, I'm so glad that worked out for him. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Looking back on this now, like, whoo, man, that guy's got to be like, whoo. So is Michael Jordan, and so is literally almost every single athlete that made a shoe deal past that point. Yeah, because this movie, yeah, this movie really did uh, show us the precedence that was set by, yeah. the, by this shoe deal. Um, so let's talk about the positive from this movie, which I could have sworn we already The were. whole movie. Yeah, this whole freaking movie is just astounding. Ben Affleck, mm -hmm. easily top of his game with this movie. Um, it's not a, not a movie written by him. 
Doesn't take place in Boston. But. No, but but it does it does show the the value and the pedigree that he has now to his name in the director chair. There's a couple of movies you, maybe you don't really find as uh, fun by him, but I mean when you have like Argo and the town and uh, yeah. now this movie, yeah, it really shows that Ben Affleck is one to constantly keep your eye on in terms of directing. Yeah. Um, this is just a very well put together movie, and yeah, it's a movie all about like a corporate brand deal. Yeah, which you shoe. you say that yeah, it's about a corporate brand deal Cobra about a shoe. shoe. If you were to just say that, no, pass. <sighs> but it's because the story of I Nike fall asleep harder than I did during the Dungeons and Dragons movie. <laughs> there, yeah, you got to got to bring it in there somewhere because it's about the story of the signing of the the Nike deal with Michael Jordan the Air Jordan that automatically just the legendary status of that specific corporate deal kind of raises and elevates it a little bit mm-hmm. but on top of that you have the talent behind it you've got Ben Affleck you've got Matt Damon we've got Chris Tucker we've got Viola Davis which Chris Tucker for for a hot second he's not in very much but when he's in something oh he's, he's oh he's, he's golden he steals scenes oh yeah he like steals scenes like even his part in the trail I think his his one line in the trailer the like what is converse NBA all-star shoe yeah. like I th- even think that line was stealing the line like that was a good impression wasn't it uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry Mr. Tucker <laughs> appreciate your work uh, I don't know what you're not watching this um anyway so he doesn't like, hear the words coming out of your mouth right now. <laughs> that was a really good uh really good role for him and like actually really surprising he was in that yeah um all around the cast is just solid it's it's they're they're solid I mean you've got a a talent players coming to play and they're coming in and they're doing the job the way it needs to be done I know you were trying to mention Viola Davis. I want to bring yep. it back to her. The Y'all, heart of the movie? Yeah, easily. Uh, you bastards didn't nominate her for Woman King for an Oscar. Nominate her for this. She's gonna get a nomination for this. Like, uh, apparently, I saw like on some interview or something. Uh, they were talking about that. Uh, Michael Jordan asked her to be to portray his mother. That's uh, brilliant. Also, what's funny is Michael Jordan's father in this movie is actually Viola Davis's real life husband. Yeah. So they got the real married couple, and they said the this works. This works beautifully. Apparently, Michael Jordan in real life signed off on it. Like, yep, uh, I approve. These people embody my parents. Yeah. It. So wow. Expert casting all the way around. I mean, yeah. Just side note on Viola Davis, Woman King, and this movie range. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I, I definitely expect a, at least a Best Supporting Actress for her, for sure. Um, but, yeah, overall, I mean, we're talking about, like, solid cast. We're talking about just the story is well-crafted. The, the balance in this movie between, like, the actual, like, drama of it all, the whole nature of the story, and then, like, the bits of humor that are sprinkled in. Because you know you gotta have some you gotta have some humor in these kinds of movies. It has some really good witty dialogue to really. That, I think that's what really helps keep you engaged as mm-hmm. an audience. The dialogue in this movie, especially like there's one conversation, uh, heated conversation between yeah, uh, Sonny on the phone with uh, with David Falk, uh, Chris Messina's character, who's yeah. the agent of Michael Jordan. They have such a witty repartee going on in that conversation. Yeah, I know I'm using big words. Wow. Uh, yeah, I'm daring. I'm daring. Hey, I'm in a happy mood. What can I say? Um, but yeah, like it was so much fun. It was so engaging and I loved it. Yeah. On top of that, I mean, while that's all solid, now you want to talk about the music in the movie as well, because best supporting actor, best supporting actor. (laughs) (laughs) This is like chockful. This is the most 80s movie I have seen since I watched The Breakfast Club. Yeah, like the first like the opening the opening to this movie is like a solid like what 2 3 minutes of pure 80s hey here's an 80s thing here's an 80s thing here's yeah. an 80s thing here's an 80s. like yeah. if, if there's anything that you feel is iconic about the 80s it is in the first like two to three minutes of this movie and it is if you like the 80s it's so nice it's like a shower of the 80s and the music like every five seconds there's a new song yeah and i love it yeah the soundtrack to this to this movie is 
Uh, it's one of those soundtracks that you go, shouldn't the Oscars have an award for just best put together soundtrack in total? <laughs> best use of time after time in a movie. Air. <laughs> Best use of the. Never mind. I'm not gonna say it. I, I don't. I almost. I almost spoiled. There's a scene. I almost spoiled it. You gotta. It, it's better if you just watch it. Oh. But yeah, the music in this just. It's yeah. So good. Like I was sitting there. Uh, we're a crowded theater, and I'm still sitting there in my chair singing. <laughs> Every single song, just bopping back and forth. Pretty much. Yeah. Look, at the end of the day, I think this is this is what I qualify as a dad movie. And if you want to know what that means. Uh, Moneyball, I think, qualifies. Ford versus Ferrari qualifies. Top Gun Maverick qualifies. These are movies that are just, just solid, just solid, well put together movies. I don't know if there's a better way to to quantify it to describe it, but this is what I was saying from the beginning when we first watched the trailer. I was saying this movie is going to have the same effect as like a Ford versus Ferrari, which yeah. is it's <clears throat> a biopic essentially that. Uh, just has a feel-good nature to it, but also at the same time tells us a true life story and what actually happened, and somehow involves Matt Damon. Because <laughs> they all do. All the good ones have Matt Damon in it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, and again, as a credit to his his acting talent, he's phenomenal in this movie. Yeah. Uh, ben Affleck, again, his like partner in almost every movie that they're in. Uh, also really good. Now, granted, he has a smaller role because he's doing the heavy lifting of directing, but mm -hmm. his role in this movie is so good. There are so many moments that, like, if if Affleck didn't expertly pull off a facial emotion or mm -hmm. uh, expression, or I think is what I'm trying to say, if he didn't pull that off as well as he did, it would have, like, completely ruined that scene or that moment. And he just, oh, so good. Just give everyone on here an Oscar. Just, yeah. if you can do that, just, I want supporting actor, best supporting supporting actor, mm -hmm. the yeah. supporting of the supporting of the supporting actor. Like, And so, like I said, Viola Davis is the heart, but I think there's also a second heart in that movie, and that second heart is Jason Bateman's character. Surprisingly, yeah. I think, like, I, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what to expect with, like, such an ensemble cast. Who's going to get the most screen time? Who's going to do what? Jason Bateman comes in as essentially the partner in crime, basically, to to Matt Damon, Sonny, and is is wonderful in this role as well. There's a scene with him and Sonny that involves a cupcake that is yeah. so good. Just the dialogue and the way they're communicating just, oh, it's so... Context is everything because you say there's a scene that involves a cupcake. Yeah. I mean... <laughs> what does that scene mean? Yeah, anyway. You're going to have to watch the movie and you'll be glad that you did. <laughs> uh, yeah. Absolutely loved it. Uh, was there anything else good to say about this movie? It's it's definitely one that I think if it doesn't end up getting an Oscar nomination, this is one of those something's wrong with the world. This is one of those movies that gets the the early nod to the Oscars later on. You know, whereas most Oscar nominated movies usually show up in the later par part of the year, uh, like everything, everywhere, all at once, and uh, even Top Gun Maverick were kind of earlier in the year. This is another one of those that I think yeah. gets that gets that nomination because it was so good, even though it came out earlier in the year and. Maybe some people forget about it by then, but I don't think anyone's going to forget about this one all year. No. Uh, this movie is expertly made, done, told, shown, heard. I, I, I Again, I really don't have – we were forcing the uh, – Swish. Yeah. That's Nothing a, but net. It's a swoosh. Whatever. Uh, we were forcing the the joke of saying that like the negative is you don't see Michael Jordan's face. That was like that really is the only like negative I could potentially grasp. But that still ended up being a positive. So yeah. the whole whatever thing, the whole the whole thing is honestly just good. Uh, so let's go ahead and give our ratings on this. I will say that easily by far this movie out of ten is going to get one of the very rare coveted. 10 out of 10 from me. I loved this oh, movie. Oh, I think he loved the movie, y'all. Oh, I absolutely love this movie. Oh. Well, I mean, after that, should I get? Should I actually give my my rating? Sure. Yeah, I guess I'll just do it. Uh, it's 9 out of 10 for me. It's it for me like it's 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 an enjoyable movie. It really is. Um, it gets a high high rating for sure. 9 out of 10 for me. Yeah. 
Anyways, that's going to be our ratings for this. What was your rating for? What is your opinion of this? Was there anything you actually didn't like about this movie? I'm curious as to what it could possibly be. Sports. Let us know. Yeah, besides that. Let oh. us know down below in the comments. While you're down there, again, make sure you hit like and subscribe. Follow us at MLP on Twitter and Instagram. You can follow me personally at RobertAdamsMLP on Twitter, Instagram, Letterboxd, and YouTube.com slash at RobertAdamsMLP. And you can follow me at ChrisAdamsMLP on Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd, as well as Twitch.tv slash ChrisAdamsMLP. Anyways, that's going to do it for this review. Thank you for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Goodbye. I don't have anything funny to say. Motor in. <sighs>